Good morning. Back in 2011, conservative analyst from the US, Jeremy Rapkin, wanted to decree of Pinochet's jurisprudence. And he said, there's been no consecutive Pinochet's case, no former head of a state, no person who, ha ha who has had a public office has been tried by another's country jurisdiction on the basis of universal jurisdiction based on Pinochet's case. As Justice Garzón said, next year, at least that's what expected, we will prove him wrong. And in the least expected place, and that is Africa. Former Chad's president will be prosecuted by a special court in Senegal based on universal jurisdiction. And this is all the result of the efforts, relentless efforts of all the victims. And as you said, isn't the Habris case comes is a, an outcome of Pinochet's case when the House of Lords in UK ruled against Pinochet's immunity, I was the head of the legal team at the House of Lords and I said this ruling was a warning for all the tyrants in the world. But actually the most significant outcome of that decision was that it was room for hope it, for all the victims who have seen their human rights violated. All over the world they discover that those perpetrators of torture could be brought to justice elsewhere. This made a change in the world of human rights, uh, I mean Pinochet's case, and we saw claims coming in from all the candidates. We have our own Pinochet. We have this dictator or this other dictator. And that's how the president of human rights in Chad requested human rights uh, help. They wanted us to help victims to bring his inhabitant to justice when he was exiled in Senegal. I'll use a PowerPoint to explain this case, since I take it that most of you don't even put Chad in the map. Uh, myself, I didn't know it before this. Um, so, if it works, let me go on. Is it working? He's in Havre, was uh, president from 82 to 90, and he came to power thanks to the US. There in the map, you can see how Chad, which is one of the poorest countries in the world, which is right in the middle of Africa, right in the core of Africa, has borders with uh, Libya. And Ronald Reagan, Reagan back in 82, takes uh, office. And Mr. Gaddafi was uh, trying to, to, to find joint purpose with uh, uh, the president of Chad. And um, Ronald Reagan thought of it as uh, the enemy of the Middle East. And so he understood that Chad was an, an opportunity to attack Gaddafi on its weakest point, on his weakest points. And well, Habre, who was a lord of war, a warlord rather, well, he thought it was a good tool to face Gaddafi. And that's how the first clandestine operation by Reagan before Nicaragua, before Angola, first thing was helping his and Habri take office in Chad. And for a few years, together with France and the US, they defeated Libya, they repelled their invasion of their territory, they kicked them out, but at the same time, he turned his own country into a big prison. prison. And according to a truth commission, 
His regime was responsible of over 40,000 deaths and systematic torture. When Heisenhower was defeated by the military chief uh, of his staff, he sought shelter in Senegal. Here we see some designs, some, some illustrations of torture of a former victim, and this was part of the Commission of Truth, uh, the Truth Commission report. You can see several parades here. It was said that there was no famine in Chad that had not been touched by the repression and torture exercised by secret police forces, DDS, Deration de la Documentation et la Sécurité. When I was in London, the president of Human Rights in Chad contacted us asking for help for, for the victims to bring Haber to justice in his shelter in Senegal. As you know, Senegal is the African country that has the largest number of ratified treaties. They were the first to ratify the Rome Institute, also the Convention Against Torture. And back then, well, we thought, well, we could try and take universal jurisdiction that had been started here in Spain. But maybe South African and South American countries may join in in favor of universal jurisdiction, which would mean that it was truly universal. So we made a coalition of all Chad victims together with lawyers and uh, other representatives in Senegal and helped chat victims to move to Senegal to lodge a claim on behalf of the Convention Against Torture. And we were quite surprised when a Senegalese judge accepted it on behalf of the Convention Against Torture. And you, you see the, the distance between Chad and Senegal. Actually, it's easier to get to Senegal from Spain than from Chad because there is no direct flight, you need to drive through Ethiopia or you need to take different flights. And victims lodge a claim and this judge in Senegal charged him with torture, crimes against humanity and barbaric activities according to the Senegalese criminal law. Well, before leaving Senegal, his took with himself the whole treasure in, uh, from Chad, and he started sharing millions. Well, I will not dwell on that to keep it, uh, to, to, to help, um, to avoid legal travel. But he created a network of support with the most influential people in Senegal. And with the new president, a period what? Well, we had some problems. There were some interferences with the legal powers and the judge who had charged uh, and who was known as the Senegalian, uh, as the Justice Garçon from Senegal, had to step down. And the Court of Appeal in Senegal stated that despite the requests and um, clauses of the Convention Against Torture, the criminal law in Senegal did not include the idea of extraterritorial justice or jurisdiction.
and so these claims were terminated. That was back in 2000, 2001. But, well, we didn't give up. Back then, there was quite a significant finding, and just it was a coincidence, but we found all the files from the DDS, hundreds and thousands of documents left behind by these uh, secret police or uh, political police, which in detail make up a roadmap on how his and Havre organized their, his people's repression. Here we see deeds of death, we have the prisoner lists. All those documents are in on, on different media, such as CDs or DVDs. One of the first documents we found was a report about one of the most feared torturers in Chad that has been trained, who had been trained in the U.S. Uh, I don't mean that he had been trained on torture, but he had been trained somehow in the U.S. And that's when we find about 1,200 a people who had been murdered who had been arrested and murdered, and over 12,000 victims, which such a mass of uh, evidence, we could convince. We were in a position to convince other countries. When jurisdiction in Senegal terminated or put an end to, to the prosecution, Victims come here, come to Spain. And Juan Garcés, who I guess is here, said, OK, uh, we, 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 won, we, we had our ship destroyed, so you need to find another country. Back then, there were two countries where the defendant did not need to be present, such as Belgium. No, now the case, the case, no, the case, that's not the case anymore, but we went to Belgium and they lodged a, a claim in Belgium. They allowed the procedure and they investigated for four years with different missions in, in Chad. And as it was said yesterday, Justice, uh, um, sorry, Transville came to Belgium and explained that if those in charge at the NATO could not go through Belgium, so he asked, they thought that they would be brought to justice, and so they would outsource the NATO's headquarters to a different country. And in just a few weeks, there was a collapse of the Euro universal jurisdiction law in Belgium. Still, there was a campaign going on in Belgium for the defense of the law, the promotion of the law, and many of those victims traveled often to Belgium. They had meetings with the first minister, the minister of foreign affairs, the minister of justice, to convince them to rescue Schatz's uh, cause. And when the Belgian law of universal jurisdiction collapsed, there was consensus already to rescue Habre's case. And so there were some interim agreements so that they would go forward with the case. In 2005, after four years of investigation, Belgium requested uh, Habre's extradition to Shah. And then victims went to the UN Committee Against Torture because they wanted to ask Senegal for their help to keep them within the borders of the country. They, he could not leave the country without a request for extradition. When Belgium requested extradition, Senegal refused it, declined it, 
Then the African Union had a request. They created a wise legislator board in place. The African Union requested Senegal's prosecution of Havers. They accepted, but they kept postponing it, adjourning it. Actually, they changed their laws to breach the lacuna or loophole that had been identified. And we lodged another claim before Senegal's courts. More years went by. Senegal was demanding 100 million euros from the international community for this prosecution. In the end, they were all fed up after so much waiting. There was this political consensus in Belgium in favor of the case. And Belgium, well, they were brave enough to bring the case before the International Court of Justice in The Hague. And as you know, this Court of Justice, in a case quoted by Justice Garçon just yesterday, they ratified the Audiedre Audiudicare principle. So they had the binding obligation to extradite him or have him tried in Senegal. And that's, rule, that, that's the ruling by court that was used by Senegal's new president, Macky Sall, prime minister rather, Macky Sall, who confirmed his commitment to having Havrez prosecuted in Senegal. And with the African Union, they created extraordinary African chambers. And as part of the legal system in Senegal, for the prosecution of the main perpetrators of international crimes committed in Chad, and together well, with uh, uh, judges from Senegal, and with the president of the court and the president of the court of appeal that had been appointed by the African Union. That court is working now. Judges have had three letters of request. Well, you see pictures of victims waiting for uh, I don't know, a hearing, uh, the position with the judges, and victims will have a chance to to be part of it as civil party with their team of lawyers and give their statements, give their, their depositions. And it's been accepted and both governments thought it would be nice to have streaming of the trial that would be beneficial for the people of Chad. So, it is expected to take place in May 2015, this proceedings, and according to Le Monde, well, this is a struggle or a turn, turn point, turning point for justice in Senegal. No return point, sorry, for, for justice in Africa. And as you know, there is controversy between African countries and the International Criminal Court, which could be a good example to prove that in Africa, crimes committed in Africa can also be prosecuted. Thank you very much. Thank you for each of the panelists. For Red Brody, very short question. So what happens with the heads of countries such as France and the US who protected, protected the dictators? Why Belgium and not Spain? What is the way of participation or whether participation of the victims is uh, in the process is ensured and whether they have a right for repair or remedy? And then also, uh, according to Sidiki Kava, also a um, uh, lawyer from Senegal and author of the book Universal Jurisdiction, he was uh, asking in his book or putting forward whether it was 
universal, whether it was universal jurisdiction from colonialist uh, uh, on the part of uh, colonialist countries and why uh, the immunity, immunity enjoyed by the US. And then a reflection, a reflection about one of the um, maps that our Sahrawi or friends from the Sahara have detected. Well, actually, I couldn't really Well, regarding complicity, well, it is an idea. Charles Taylor was condemned, was sentenced by the Special Tribunal of Sierra Leone, president of Liberia. He had never stepped on the Sierra Leone territory. He was sentenced for having helped the Sierra Leona rebel rebels on their commitment of abuses. Well, you mentioned Herring Kissinger yesterday. Well, Timor East Timor gives the green light to green light to Indonesia to invade it. When it came to making hundreds of killings, Henry Kissinger gave them further help. They hide these killings to the international or to the to the American people. Okay. Well, I'm not going to repeat everything that I said. Harry Kissinger in East Timor gives green light to the invasion. He knows that killings are being made, that there are killing hundreds of people. He hides uh, that, and then he organizes or gives them more help. The idea of complicity. So if someone is killing someone and comes to my uh, home and they ask me to give him more bullets, OK, well, this is a very basic principle of complicity that can be applied to those who provide arms to or weapons to Syria, knowing for sure that they will be using them. However, you can, it's not the same as saying you have supported politically a dictatorship versus you have taken direct participation in the commission of the crimes. Why that you might not explain? Well, in the Havre case, well, primarily because of language issues. So when we consulted Juan Garces, he told me, look, Chad, Spain, that, that we were very much aware of the Pinochet case that universal jurisdiction depends on the or political uh, willingness. But Pinochet case was successful because in Spain there was a strong political support from the Spanish people. The Spanish uh, people were supporting the Spanish justice. And every time the PP government at that time wanted to cut off your link with the uh, lords, then Kaiser used to publish a, an article on the El País newspaper, and then there was a reaction followed. So at that time, Margaret Thatcher was not empowered by Tony Blair. So I believe that for universal jurisdiction to be effective, that is to say, can prosecute in a country crimes that can be committed in a different country, you need to have the political support for that. Why? Well, because there will be, we know that there will be difficult political moments has, such as in the case here in Spain. Now, the, the former president of the FIB is now the Ministry for Justice in Senegal. So there is a political determination in Senegal on the part of the president, the prime minister, the ministry for minister for justice. This case has a strong political support. The, in terms of participation of the victims, well, it is the ordinary way they to, they, to do it, as they do in French courts. The victims take active part, same as the attorney, the defense, 
defense. And then if, well, whenever, well, now there has the, the, the property has been confiscated or seized. Two bank accounts have been uh, frozen in Senegal. Now we are looking for possible bank accounts in different countries, but we are also working to have complementary justice in the shared. That is to say, to offer to the victims that will not have the possibility to visit, to go to the Senegal uh, courts. We want them to have justice in the shared. And actually, well, we, we saw the same effect like uh, or the same thing that happened between well Spain and Chile, despite the differences. For the last 20 years, victims have been asking for justice in the shed, uh, remedy, recognition, compensation, etc. And now that there is a trial in Senegal, now the shad government has promised compensation for the first time, it has incarcerated, put in prison, the accomplices of Hebre. Hebre. Well, now I would like you, as well as the other panelists, not to give lots and lots of explanations, but to tell us about the lessons learned. The lesson learned. This is the uh, title of our roundtable. Lessons learned and what we have to do in the future to consolidate. First of all, we need to have the political cre uh, conditions created. Created. I mentioned about Belgium before. Well, in Belgium, we've created, together with the Flemish people, people from Wallonia, Wallonia's area, with Christian people, everyone, we've had a consensuated or agreed upon support for Habre's case. So it, it is necessary to have that landscape and that political consensus, right? In Senegal, they didn't know who Habre, Mr. Habre was. French TV produced a documentary on the case, and we managed that documentary to be broadcasted on Senegal's TV, which changed the behavior there and attitude there. There's not a month where we are not troubling and helping victims move to Senegal. We find victims from Senegal who had been imprisoned in Chad, and they are now our spokespeople there in Senegal. So we need to have the political conditions created. It is not that.